Hi, I'm Anne Marie Batterstone. This is State and Local. This is the second of three interviews of candidates for the open slot in the select board. It's I think it's a two-year position. And with me I have today, I have Jim Leon, who you were now how long were you on the select board before? Was it 14 years? Uh, well, it depends who you ask. No, oh. I, <laughs> I was on for 15 years, five terms. F five terms. Yeah. Now you, what, why did you decide to step down? Was it had other things to do? I mean, you um, certainly have lots. You have grandchildren. You have a boat. Do you not? <laughs> I saw a picture I, of you on the boat. I, I assumed I, it was yours. Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was mine. Um, no, I, it's. Um, you know, I've I've been on. I was on the board of selectmen for fifteen years. I've been on a school committee for nine years. I was on the recreation board for three years. Uh, a number of different uh, committees. Um, I was one of the founders of the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, which I am very pleased still functions well. Um, I, 15 years on the board, to be very honest, I was tired. Not, not so much physically, but mentally, I was tired. Um, the, the people, I don't think a lot of people understand that, um, I mean, I, I, my motivation for running in this town is really basically simple. I, I don't have any agenda. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to run for any other office. Uh, I just want to help my community. This, mm -hmm. this, I love this town. Mm -hmm. I've lived here close to 40 years now, and this is my home. And uh, if I have skill sets that can help the town, uh, I, I'd like to do that. Uh, do you feel there's a, 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 a leadership vacuum right now? That's not fair for me to say. I, I, I think, let me tell you why I'm <laughs> running. Maybe that's a better reason to do it, because I, I didn't plan on doing this. This, this wasn't on my to-do list, in fact. <laughs> Unfortunately, about a year ago, I threw away all my signs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I got to go get new signs. Oh. Um, no, I, I've been on the school committee and still am currently on the school committee at King Philip, which the children are, you know, that's my passion. I, I love trying to help and work with kids. Uh, that's what started my political career. I've you got, used to coach. Uh, I thought. still am coaching. You're kidding, really? Know, no, I'm still refing too, believe it or not. And Much, you're still on the ice. I hope so. So Mattie Lee took care of your knees all right. Uh, well, my knees have held up, but I do have a titanium hip. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Yeah. But, um, huh. Anyway, I'm, I could talk about hockey all night, but we'll get past the half okay. hour. Um, and I, you, know, you made me lose track of where. Oh, you were saying that you. Um, so, um, the, the town. You know, my background is is financial services, and um, uh, the town uh, doesn't at this point. We have a new town administrator. Uh, we have a vacancy on the board. Uh, we have two great select persons on the board. Uh, but I hope people think people understand how time-consuming that job really is. I, I would spend, on average, about 25 hours a week uh, on the Board of Selectmen. Um, hmm. And to me, the, the major issue that, that has brought me sort of back into the, you know, into the fold, or if you will, uh, is financials. Um, we, are, we are managing a 50-some-odd million dollar business here. And the town is facing some very, very difficult decisions. Uh, new fire station. Uh, you may not know, but uh, the uh, King Philip enrollment is declining. Really? Rentham is declining. Plainville is declining. And Norfolk is inclining. <laughs> and that, that means two things. Uh, it, it obviously impacts our space needs here in Norfolk because we have an increasing enrollment. And you know that they're doing a feasibility study on expanding the schools. Yes. Um, and it also means that the way the King Philip budget works, we're going to get a higher piece of the cost right. than the other towns are. So uh, you're looking at a that's lot. Based, excuse me, that's based on numbers. No, well, it's, it's, numbers are one component of it. It's also both based on what they call the wealth factor. It's a very complicated formula, and, and there's some guy hidden up in Boston that can figure it out. Um, it is a complicated formula, but we will this year be getting a bigger share than we have had in the past. Oh. And um, so when you look at how we operate and with the <coughs> limits of two and a half and our resources, um, the fiscal issues this town's going to be facing are going to be really important. And I've got a lot of experience in that. And uh, if we do it wrong, it, it's going to have a significant oh, negative a significant negative impact on a lot of folks in town because we are 95 percent residential tax based. We're not going to have any great commercial, you know, uh, windfall that's going to show up here. So uh, it's going to fall on the homeowner. And we have a lot of people that have lived here their entire lives that are on fixed income that, you know, our taxes are high. So how we manage our way through this 
and figure out how we, if assuming everything passes, let's just take that as an equation, <laughs> how we manage our way through this, how we float our bonds, short-term, long-term funding, things of that nature, are things that we really got to be smart about. And that's where my experience is. So um, we have an excellent financial person in Todd Lindmark here in town, but the board of selectmen play a significant role in that. And, and um, uh, our bond rating is critical. Um, when I went on the board, our bond rating wasn't very good. When I got off the board, it was the highest of any town our size. It has since gone down. Uh, we got to get it back up because the, the bond rating clearly indicate it doesn't clearly, the bond rating dictates the amount we pay in interest when we float these bonds. And we okay, are so higher rate, higher the, the rate. The lower your rating, the, the, the lower your bond rating, the, the higher the interest pay, rates yeah, you pay. Yeah. And to lure people in despite the lower bond yeah. rating. And, and so as I looked at this and, and saw the potential of these additional expenses, which are substantial, um, we've got to merge this with expiring debt from the two schools, King yeah. Philip and, and uh, the, uh, both the, element, both the uh, middle school and the senior high, uh, which will be expiring between three and four years from now. Uh -huh. we, we've, so short term, long term, all of that has to be worked out. And I, I think I can help there. So it's really the financial mm -hmm. considerations that have um, kind of made me want to see if I can't help and get back in. You, you know, we have a new town administrator who is new to the town. Um, and, you know, uh, Kevin lost an election. And fortunately, he's still going to be there. But you know, I, I assume Kevin might have aspirations at some point to go on and do other things. Otherwise, he wouldn't have run. Mm -hmm. uh, and a uh, wonderful thing to do if that's what he wants. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I just, I just want to stay here and help the town. Um, now, Anita has, what, an, one more year? She's up this year. This is her, this is her third year. Her third year. Yeah. So when would she, when would that? She'll be running this May. This May. Yeah. Okay. And, and Kevin, Kevin has another year. Okay. After this. All right. This position that I'm running for is a two and a half it's year two, position. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I believe Todd, I, I read somewhere or heard that, that, that Todd estimates that the, the addition, uh, the additional taxes for an average house, correct me if I'm wrong about this, would be about another $600. Close to that. And that yep. it would take 25 years to, I don't know if I have the right verb here, but kind of to, to pay back the, well, the, what the, um, is owed. He but, may, I, it, it, normally we fund these over 20 years. Oh, okay. Now, I, haven't talked Maybe with, I, I haven't talked with Todd about this, uh, so I, you know, he may, there may be something that he thinks we should spread this over 25 years. I, I can't speak to that. Traditionally, these have been 20-year bonds. But that, so anything could happen in 20 years. You sure. know, you could need another new building. Yep. So let me ask you this. So would you still be paying on that 20 years, even though you might have to start something new in the meantime. Well, it, it's, if you take a loan, you're going to pay off that loan. Okay. <laughs> Period. Regardless of... Period. Doesn't matter. Now, you may roll it into another loan, for uh -huh. example, in the King Philip. When you do a 20-year bond on a building, you can't refinance until the 10th year. Okay. So when King Philip uh, just refinanced their bonds, they got lower rates. So they reduced the overall burden. I mean, there's a lot of that that goes on. Another reason why I, I think I can contribute, because I have good knowledge in that area. Um, those are some of the drivers that are forcing me this. I, I would hope that no one would ever run for the Board of Selectmen with an agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you, you should run for this just to help. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. one's, you know, no one's going to thank you. You're not going to get any parades or, you know, it just, and then you're going to have some people not like you. It, it's the way it is. You, you put yourself out there. You make a decision, uh, you know, I, you kid about it, but I said the best training to be on the Board of Selectmen is to referee college hockey, which I did for many years. Every time I raise my hand, somebody's mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one coach loves me, the other coach hates me. And, and it, if it bothered you, I'd never go on the ice. And you know? I'm just curious, because, you know, I have, I have both, I, Dr. Manningly did, on your recommendation, I had him do my knees. Mm -hmm. And you're so you have also have an uh, an artificial hip, and you're still able to ski, uh, skate rather. And I can do anything. Uh, I huh. um, I had this hip done about ten years ago. It was a hockey injury. Yeah, uh, it was I before got your knees. My knees are fine. No, but that was done before the. No, my knees. Done. I've never had knee work. My knees are fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're yeah. making me sound like a no, cripple here. No, no, no. I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm mixing up my situation. With no, I I, I I injured it playing hockey about 10, 12 years ago, um, and uh, had a, <laughs> I had a full hip replacement. Was that Dr. Mattingly? Uh, it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I was back on ice in four weeks. So, really? Yeah. So I, I've, I've had no issues with but it you must have had a certain level of strength to be doing it in the first place, to be doing that well, kind of skating. I mean, I've been and, on skates since I was four years old, yeah. so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, 
it's just, you know, I was very fortunate. He's a great doctor. I, I healed well, and um, yeah, I still skate, yeah. ski, do I'm do glad crazy I went things. to him, too. It yeah. was, that was on your I forgot you went to the same doctor. He's, yep. ter he's terrific. Anyway, we're, we're going to run out of time. We talk about oh, our medical okay. records here. <laughs> um, well, you know, it all is all yeah. part of a big picture, isn't it? So um, that, that, that's really the main reason why I, I thought about this. And uh, I really I think I can help. Uh, you know, I, I, if the town agrees, they'll put me back. If they don't, then, you know, I'll keep going and working on the schools. So I, I assume you also wanted to sort of be in the mix about what goes on with the, with the fire station. Well, I, I, I mean, we have needed a fire station in this town for some time. Uh, I mean, that should not be a secret to anybody. Anytime you have your on-call on firefighters living in a trailer in back of the station and trucks that won't fit into the building, because the building was built in the 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, even though it looks nice mm -hmm. on the outside, I inside it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And so we, we need one. Now, you know, whether the proposal is the right or wrong answer, the voters are going to decide. Uh, in my view, we need a station, and uh, we'll see what the voters say. Who decided, or do you know, or how was it decided to go with a new building rather than with repairs? Um, they, well... Was it, it had to do with the square footage? They, they, the, the Board of Selectmen established a building committee. I've served on two of them. Um, and usually there's a member of the selectmen on that. Um, sometimes there isn't, sometimes there is. And that committee then goes through the process of hiring what's known as clerk of the works uh, and an architect. And you begin the process of thinking through the different alternatives on how this might or might not work. And obviously, remodeling or tearing down are all considerations. Um, I personally think starting a new building is the right answer. I, I think most of the people that looked at this 10 years ago felt the same way. I mean, this will be the fourth, I believe, off, uh, third, I'm sorry. This will be the third the effort went, to get a new station yeah, for the yeah. fire guys. Um, and so we'll feasibility see where it goes. studies. There I'm were sorry? there were three fe feasibility studies. Well, That's yes, yes. I, I mean, it, it's a little. It's not quite like the schools where they do more extensive feasibility studies. They get into studies about you know, student population, the different class sizes. We're, our growth is in the lower classes, in kindergarten, mm -hmm. first grade. Mm -hmm. So um, that drives some of the decisions as to where you build and how you build. Fire station is a fire station. It needs to be centrally located. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect location for it. Um, it, and that's where it should be, because uh, you, you want, I remember Cole saying many times, I can get anywhere in town in two and a half minutes. And uh, whereas a police station doesn't have to be, because the police are on the road 24-7. And uh, uh, people probably don't realize, but the police patrol every street in this town every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they, you know, different times, different places, but they're there every day. So um, the station needs to be centrally located, and we need a new station. So we'll see what the voters say. Mm -hmm. Now you were said you were willing to speak a little bit about the uh, you know about what I had asked about you know setting the record straight about what happened with the um, safety building. Um, we had uh, uh, we had far too much overcost on that building. No, no question about it. Um, but a lot of it was out of our control. Um, we were in a partnership with the state. Uh, the state wanted us to become, or we, ap we applied, I should say, and the state agreed. The state funded a regional dispatch center for us. Oh, yes, Millions yes. and millions of dollars. Yes, and it was on I a read grant. That. And we were the second such experiment, if you were, to establish this. And involved the three towns, and now I think it's up to five. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and that grant had specific requirements, and it had specific deadlines and time frames. Originally, we were going to do this in Rentham, and Rentham had agreed to put it in their building, and they found out they didn't have the space. Uh, Plainville didn't have any opportunity for us, so we went looking for space because we needed a police station anyway. So we joined with the state to create a joint project between the, uh, you know, to have one building that would handle both regional dispatch and the police station. We were the first, was that the first one of this kind? Second. There were, I think Hingham and Cohasset, South Shore had the first. We were the second. It was a big pro. I mean, it's A huge project. I, I've forgotten the exact amount of, of the state, but it was millions of dollars. But um, so we hired, we, did the, we went through the process, we formed a committee, we did all of the correct bidding, we followed all the rules, everything was done right. And we hired an architect, we hired a clerk of the works, and that's probably the last good thing that happened. Um, we had... Hmm. significant deficiencies in the drawings from the architect. Significant. Um, and all of these meetings are taped. So right. if anyone really wants to see the yes, story yes. and they're bored some night, go back. But we started finding, you know, uh, the clerk of the works who are supposed to review these documents right. did a terrible job. 
huh, we fired those folks. Um, and we replaced them, and we ended up firing those folks. About everything that could go wrong went wrong. And the problem, had we been just building a police station, we would have brought this to a screeching halt. Just stop. We're done. We have too many wrong errors here. There's too many things yes. that have been miscalculated. Uh -huh. Cost overruns are going to be far too excessive. We're stopping. And we wanted to do that. We couldn't because of the agreement we had with the state hmm. on the regional dispatch. I never, oh, I didn't know, I never heard well, that story. Well, people don't talk about that, but that's, that's why we had no choice. So we, we had to continue to work our way through this. Um, we got a lot of folks involved. I mean, you, you, it, it, we had some pretty heated meetings. Um, I mean, simple things like you know, staircases designed in the wrong place. Um, there were garage doors on the existing building. I believe they were either 12 or 14, uh, they were 14 feet doors. The, the diagram showed them as 12 foot doors. I mean, silly stuff like that. The um, uh, Just, concrete like patio to hold the tower. He designed it too small for the tower. Oh my lord. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not an architect. The, mm -hmm. I, I can't read those documents. That's what the clerk of the works is supposed right. to do. And um, it just was a mess. And yep. I, I wish we could have stopped it, but we did the best we could with the hand we were dealt. Um, and you know, we worked hard on that. We, we scraped every dime and we did everything we could do to minimize those costs. And yes, we went over cost. I mean, it, it was, I could go on for hours on this, but um, it kept me up at night. Well, you know, I, I, this is maybe a small thing, but I, I, you have oak, there's oak wainscoting in the lobby. Mm -hmm. I, I was shocked when I saw that. I didn't understand what that was doing there. I mean, you want a building that's utilitarian, don't uh, you? You know, I, 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 I'm not sure that that's, that was not, that's, that would be the last thing I'd be arguing about, to be honest with you. I mean, it, the cost overruns didn't have anything to do with things like that. The cost overruns had to do with just plain wrong drawings. Oh, really? Just bad drawings. And I mean, doors were designed up in the dispatch center, too small for the equipment to get through. Now, this, who, who would recommend it? somebody, the, I mean, how did was you get? A well-regarded architect, had great resumes. He's from Connecticut. We're not going into the names or anything like that, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's history. We, we've learned from it. Um, would we do some things differently? I would, uh, but you know, uh, we, well, were, we did all we could do to salvage a bad hand. That's about and who the best stepped I can into say. the breach when the when the, the two clerks were fired? Uh, our Matt did. Our and and I, I know he's come under criticism for that, and it's unfair. Uh, he was incredible. He he worked his butt off to find every penny out of that project he could. I mean, they, uh, they can tell you the the general contractor didn't like him, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's a good thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he watched every penny that went through there. Uh, we. We combed every financial expense on that project to make sure that everything was justified. Uh, we did everything we could, but we were dealing with bad drawings. And you stayed with, you had to stay with the architect till the end, right? Yes, yeah, you had no choice. Huh. And remember, the architect wasn't hired just by us, he was hired by the state as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he did both projects. So let me ask you another let's, question. Let's get off of that one. <laughs> oh, so, no, I mean, well, I have okay. still had some. So when you when you build a building like that with the contingencies, do you, did you think the contingencies, because the contingencies were quite were quite uh, generous, weren't they? Yes, they were. So do you think that that would tend to make lead people into thinking, well, there's this contingency, so we can go ahead and you know ask for a little more. You know, I know there was like every a every every building project has issues. Uh, I mean, nothing goes as perfectly as you would like. And that's why you build in contingencies. And uh, you, you know that something won't be quite the way we thought it was or, you know, whatever. And you expect that. Yeah. And, and we plan for that. We didn't expect to have drawings that didn't even have a roof on it. We didn't expect to have drawings that weren't, didn't have doors measured correctly, you know, or concrete patios too small. I mean, these are staircases that were located in the wrong place. These were the things that were wrong with those drawings. Well, is there no way to appeal to the state and say, we did. look, the, I, I can't the, get into that, but you know, when it was all said and done, there was action taken. Mm -hmm. I, what, what I meant was to, to, to get somebody in before things went too far afield. We did. We, we got rid of the, the people that weren't doing it well and got other people involved. Uh -huh. um, you know, we did everything we could do. That's all I can tell you. We, we, we worked very hard knowing we had a bad deal.
what we've ended up, the good news is we've ended up with a great station. <laughs> and we've ended up with a regional dispatch center that has been one of the shining stars for the state and has made our town, Plainville, Rentham, and some other communities that are joining in as well, have made us all safer. And so, you know, while yes, we all regret that it got into the situation it did, the end result is we've made our community safer. And, and that is something every selectman should strive for. Here's another question. With some of the money that was slated for the renovations originally for the fire station, mm -hmm. was some of that used for other things in town? No. Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I've been off the board now for uh, almost four years. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't answer that for that four-year gap. But prior to that, no. Because I know there was a building or there was a, a, a room built uh, in, the, in, the, in the center here which I guess that's sort of like a little fire station. I don't, I don't, I can't answer the, I, I know that when I left the board, that money was dedicated mm -hmm. to the, the future project. Wasn't sufficient to finish it, but there were several million dollars still mm -hmm, dedicated mm -hmm, to that mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. and they were earmarked for that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I left the board. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to ask people that are on the board if that question, not me. Mm. <laughs> um, now this school expansion, so if, if, if you were to be, um, chosen, elect, elected, um, because it seems like there's not a very big window of time between this fire station building and re an expansion in the schools. It was not going to be a, a pretty big hit all at once? or uh, I mean, Potentially, and, and that, that's why how you fund it and how you bond these projects and time these projects is so critical. I mean, just to say, okay, we're going to do it on a Tuesday uh, can create chaos. So. Uh, it goes back to what I said sort of in my opening comments. One of the reasons I would like to go back and contribute is that, that I think I can help there. Uh, working with Todd, um, I think we can figure out the, the best way to fund this with the least amount of consistent impact to the taxpayer. Uh, if the town votes to do both projects, then it's going to be a substantial hit to the taxes. Now, you can, you, we have existing debt. So you, know, you try to time some of the new debt to the debt coming off the books. Are you referring so, to the, when the building is finished or are you trying to Well, trying to anything else? the town might, you know, if, you know, we fund a lot of things in town. Uh -huh. The ones that are most, that would be most current, that are coming off the books more currently are the middle school and the senior high. And uh, so if we can time some of the funding of this to off, be offset by the loss or the gain, if you will, reduction in our, our uh, taxes, time that will minimize the impact to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it won't be an increase, it will, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what's going on is more than what's coming off. But those are the kinds of things we have to think through and figure out how to do that. But do you think that the, the, the work on the school would have to be postponed or has, there, there's no date, there's no... Uh, they're doing a feasibility for, for study right now, uh -huh. okay, and so that'll tell us that. But there is no denying that the enrollment is increasing. Do you think people are aware that, that these two big projects could be coming at a, with, you know, at a relatively short intervals? Uh, Do you think I, the average person knows? Because I, I just mentioned that because there was an advisory board meeting. I believe, I believe uh, the chair had made a comment about that about people needing to know, you know, the whole picture of these two big renovations. And I guess well, there was a lot of... Uh, honestly, that, that's uh, another reason why I'm trying to, or hoping to get back on the board, is that I don't think we have done enough uh, communication. You know, I mean, it's nice if you watch all the Board of Selectmen's meetings, but, you know, most people have other things to do, and there are better shows on town, <laughs> you know. Well, it depends. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I do watch them, so I'm guilty of it. But, uh, you know, I do think shows like this, you remember Jack Hathaway and I used to do these mm -hmm. shows on a regular basis, just, just communicating what's going on. Uh, we need to do more of that. And, uh, you know, I know COVID kind of took a toll on that, um, but we need to do more of that. I mean, we work for the town. I should, well, work is the wrong word. There's no pay. But I mean, you know, yeah, we're serving the community. Serving the and, um, and that should be the motivation of everyone that serves, is, is to help the town. Because I think a lot of people do not pay attention. People's lives are busy. To a lot of things. I, you know, I have two kids, that, I have two daughters that live in town and seven grandkids. I, I assure you that they're not current on everything that's going on in town and they can call me and ask me. I'm not even current anymore because unless you're involved in a day-to-day -day basis, it's hard to know that. Well, at that level, but I mean, even just something as simple as this business of, 
uh, because I, I guess at that advisory board, I guess people sort of, you know, jumped on her and said, well, we blah, 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 we need this, don't negate the uh, importance of the fire station. So, but I mean, I think, I think people need to know that before they turn around, they see the taxes going way up. Well, I think the, I think the fire well, station, I, I think that both the fire station and the schools have been very open about the need. I, I don't think, uh, I don't know what else the fire guys could have done. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, they were there at Community Day. They've been, yeah, they've yeah, been going true, to the different true. centers. They've been down at Rivers Edge. Yeah, they're, they're doing yeah, everything yeah. they can. Yeah, and they've taped them get, here. Yeah, they're so they're doing tape. everything they can do. You know, it, it's up to the, to, to the residents to decide whether or not they want to see it <laughs> and, or hear it. Um, and I think the schools have been very open about this, too. This is not a new topic to them. But not to the extent that of, of making it public and that the fire, the well, fire they, people... Well, they haven't, they're not at a point where they can make a recommendation, you know, they're, they're doing a feasibility study, Emory, which, mm -hmm, which means mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're going to look at what the different options are, mm -hmm, the different mm -hmm. considerations. Uh, the need is real. I, I mean, we, we, there are, it, our enrollment is going up rather dramatically, and so it's real. And uh, this is four minutes, <laughs> oh four my minutes. gosh, <laughs> I, maybe we can go over. <laughs> um, so let me just ask you something. When, when you were selectman, what was it that, what did you, what did you enjoy the most in your, in the, during the meetings in terms of, because I always, I always felt that you were willing to let people speak no matter when during the meeting. I, maybe I misunderstood. Maybe no, I missed. No, it's, but then um, they wanted to have that 15 minutes at the beginning. You know, it's, the it's interesting because there, there are several things that, that I, probably am responsible for, good and bad, um, that if I had to do over again, I'd do over again. And actually, as I say that, I probably wouldn't. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the, um, the town is responsible for building bridges, period. We don't need community input. We don't need, you know, if, if we have state funding, we just go do it. And we, we don't involve the neighborhood other than inform them yes. and, and let them know what's going yeah, on yeah. and all of that. When we went at the Large Street Bridge, because that is such a unique situation, uh, I brought the community in. And it, you know, I, I thought they should have a say yes. in this. It was a nightmare. But well, they didn't want it, or they didn't well, like it, the way it, it was being they, done? They, they confused the, the work on the bridge, which mm -hmm. was falling apart, oh, with, with the initiative of a 40B that was on the other side. So they tried to, you know, incorrectly connect the two issues and oh. fought the bridge. Well, they thought it was the bridge was being built to accommodate Correct. the new people. And the bridge was being built because it was falling down. I remember. <laughs> I, it was wood, wasn't it? It was pretty bad shape. The, the basis of that was actually just boulders. It was just boulders. Right, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, and it was dangerous. It was dangerous. And the causeway was dangerous. And so we could have just gone in and done it. We had the money. We had the funding. We could have just gone and done it. I thought it was the right thing to do to involve the community. And, and it turned into kind of a slugfest. But I would do it again, because I, I think that's the obligation of the board to well, bring people in around issues that involve their lives. I, that's our job. Well, people have their own little agendas. They misunderstand things, they or they yeah. draw conclusions that yeah. aren't fair. You know, I mean, what can you do? All, all, all you can do is, is tell the truth and give them the facts. That's all you can do. It, it's nothing else you can do. And, and um, how did and the expenses work out on that project? Very, it was fine. Uh -huh. It was fine. Yeah, no, there were no overruns there. That was all st state grant. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it, it, that's you know, I'm still on the school committee. Uh, interestingly enough, I, um, you know, I, I thought, well, I'll take a year off, and then I went on to the King Philip School Committee, thinking, well, that you know, I won't have quite as much work. And of course, I landed right in the middle of a COVID pandemic. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> so <laughs> I went from one fire to another. Um, and now our superintendent, uh, current superintendent, has announced his retirement. So we oh, have, uh, we're going to need to find... Is um, that um, Zinni? Zinni, correct. Oh, has he really? He's, he's retiring. And uh, so we've formed a search committee to begin I didn't the know hunt that. for a new superintendent. And I'm chairing that committee. So uh, my well, maybe, next two months are going to be pretty busy. Oh, maybe you can come on and talk a little bit about that, because that would sure. be of... Uh, yeah. I, I, think, I think we're pretty much... Uh, our, we're running... Our rope is... <laughs> we're running out our, uh, so, but listen... Well, he, I, can, he can edit out all the hockey conversation, so... <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel, but you know, I feel like with these interviews, you know, I don't want it to be all technical yeah. and all, you know, facts. I, just, and, I mean, it, it, just, you know, it's it's, it's just just, just to a, sum up. I, mean, I always enjoy chatting with you because you, you, you know, I never know where it's going to go, and that's half the fun. But, well, it's, that's yeah. you kind of. Want, I think that's what you kind of want. Well, listen. Good luck to you. 
Uh, just just to sum up, uh, you know, I I'm I'm hoping to get back on the board because two reasons really. One, I, I dearly love the town. Uh, I, I think I have some skill sets that can help under the present circumstances that we're going to be facing. Um, if the town agrees, I, I'll do my very best. Uh, if they don't, then I'll go play a little more hockey. <laughs> 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 See if I can get another artificial hip. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, this this is my home, Anne Marie. And and uh, all of the uh, when I retired from the business world, uh, I decided that I, I was going to spend my time giving back to the town. And I've tried to do that. And I, well, you know, everybody some, knows some that. People, well, you know, and, and when you make decisions, you always understand that, you know, when you hang around long enough, and I guess I hung around long enough, some people will like what you did and other people won't. Uh, you know, I hope more people like it, in which case I can go back. If they don't, then that's their choice. Well, um, if that fear stopped you, then nobody would be doing anything. Democracy you know? still works, despite some efforts to pep bleep who believe that it doesn't. I will not contest the election. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my. All right, listen, thank you, for, thank you for watching State and Look. We have to close. My guest was Jim Leon, who is running for the, the position of selectman. That select election, board. Select the board. same select board. <laughs> and the, what did I say? Select position. Select man. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be on January 28th. Yeah. And so we hope that everybody will go out and vote and uh, stay well tomorrow. There's going to be a big Big, huge storm, everyone's scared. So, but thank you for watching. And uh, I'm Anne-Marie Battistone, and this was State and Local on Norfolk Public Access. Thanks for having me, and uh, thank you.